What if you could see beyond the basic amplitude and wiggles of seismic data? What if each trace could tell you not just about the amplitude, but also about the frequency, the phase, and energy distribution all at once? Today we're diving into instantaneous seismic attributes, which are also known as complex trace attributes, some of the original algorithms that revolutionized how we interpret subsurface geology. I'm Heather Beadle at the University of Oklahoma. When we look at a seismic trace, each point contains more information than just its amplitude. But what do we mean by instantaneous? Think about listening to music. So at any given moment, any instant, a musical note has three fundamental properties. Its volume, so its amplitude, its pitch, its frequency, and its timing relative to other notes. That's its phase. As always, I think the best way to demonstrate seismic attributes is through showing the difference in the seismic data. So let's start here with some data from the Great South Basin, just offshore of the South Island of New Zealand. At the heart of instantaneous attribute lies the Hilbert transform, shown here in this seismic data. It's a mathematical operation that creates a companion trace that shifted 90 degrees in phase. So think about it as adding a new dimension to our data. It's subtle, but looking at the seismic line from real data, the Hilbert transform complements the original signal, revealing subtle features that might otherwise go unnoticed. So we can look at the Hilbert transform with a little bit more detail. So at its core, it's a mathematical operator that shifts the phase of all of the frequency components of a signal by negative 90 degrees, or negative pi over two radians, while maintaining their amplitudes. Think of it this way, for any seismic trace, u sub t, we create its Hilbert transform, u sub h of t, which acts as a quadrature component, essentially creating a companion trace shifted by a quarter of a period. And together they form what we call the analytic trace, which is A sub T. So I'd be remiss not to mention that Tanner et al. in 1979 established the foundational mathematics for deriving instantaneous attributes from seismic data using this complex trace. And they showed how envelope, phase, and frequency could all be extracted from that analytic signal. Their work kind of revolutionized seismic attribute analysis. It kind of kicked it off at least. So let's look at some of those attributes first. Okay, so we're gonna do that by looking at some seismic data and know you don't actually need a supercomputer to run these algorithms. So this is the instantaneous envelope or reflection strength. It combines the original and the Hilbert transform traces to show us the total energy at each point. This is particularly useful for identifying bright spots and sequence boundaries. The instantaneous phase, which ranges from negative pi to positive pi, or negative 180 to positive 180 degrees, highlights the continuity of events, regardless of the amplitude. So you can see here how it brings out subtle stratigraphic features that are barely visible in the amplitude data. Now we're looking at the instantaneous frequency, which helps us identify thin beds, attenuation, and hydrocarbon effects. So you can notice how the frequency changes across different geological features in this section. We can look at these three aspects as summarized nicely by Partika in 2001 and Chopra and Marfer in 2007 using the wedge model, which shows a nice wedge model of a shale sand shale, um, and what the instantaneous envelope looks like, as well as the instantaneous phase and the instantaneous frequency. The cosine of instantaneous phase is a really great seismic attribute that normalizes the seismic trace while preserving polarity information, and this makes it easier to track seismic events. It provides better continuity, um, visualization than the raw phase values, and it also avoids the sharp transition where the phase is wrapping around from negative 180 to positive 180. So I really want, quickly want to pause and focus on this cosine of instantaneous phase for seismic stratigraphy. So let's look at an example by Dr. Javier Tellez from the Carnarvon Basin off of Northwest Australia. So here's a seismic section that he had with all those yellow arrows 
you can notice the detailed seismic stratigraphy work that Javier did to try to understand the details of this prograding system out into the basin. With cosine of instantaneous phase, you can more quickly map the top lap, the down lap, and all those other critical termination patterns because they're easier to notice, and in turn, it gives us more confidence in our seismic interpretation. Okay, back on track. So now we're going to look at the wavelet or response attributes, which were introduced by Bonin in 1984. These address the instability of conventional instantaneous attributes by focusing on the most energetic parts of the signal, specifically at envelope peaks. So instead of calculating attributes at every sample point, these attributes are computed at an envelope maxima and then interpolated between adjacent minima, which provides more stable and geologically meaningful measurements. The wavelet phase here represents the phase values captured specifically at the envelope peaks and then interpolated between the local minima. So it provides a more stable phase measurement that's less sensitive to noise and interference. So unlike instantaneous phase, which can be a little bit erratic between stronger reflections, the wavelet phase better represents the actual seismic events. Wavelet frequency captures the frequency content at points of maximum reflection strength and extends those values between the envelope minima, offering a more robust frequency estimate than conventional instantaneous frequency. So this approach reduces the, the wild fluctuations that you can often see in instantaneous frequency calculations, particularly in areas of weaker signal, like the deeper section. So let me jump back to instantaneous frequency next so you can compare and contrast between the two. Here's the instantaneous, here's the instantaneous frequency, and so you can note by that red arrow um, that it looks particularly not so great um, in the deeper section around two seconds where I've pointed it out. Next, I want to talk about the weighted average, which was described by Barnes in 2000, and it improves attribute stability by using the envelope squared as a weighting function so that it emphasizes high amplitude portions of the signal where attributes are most reliable. This approach gives more importance to the stronger reflection while reducing the impact of noise and weaker signals. So this means that the weighted average frequency provides a more stable frequency estimate by computing a running average of instantaneous frequencies weighted by the squared envelope, which effectively emphasizes the frequencies associated with the strong reflections. So unlike simple instantaneous frequency, this attribute remains stable even in the low amplitude regions where traditional frequency calculations might become erratic. The weighted average bandwidth gives us a robust estimate of frequency spectrum's width by measuring the variance of the frequency distribution and then again weighting it by the signal's energy. This provides a more meaningful measure of frequency content than just the instantaneous bandwidth itself, which tends to go to zero at envelope peaks where the signal is actually the strongest. Now I want to end with my favorite instantaneous attribute, one that we're using all the time in my research group. This one is the sweetness attribute, and it was introduced back in 1998 by Radovich and Olivieras. And what it does is it combines the envelope and the frequency information, specifically the envelope over the square root of frequency. And so in this example, you can notice how the sweetness helps identify the sandier facies within a shale matrix, which is kind of a game changer for lithologic identification. So let me just wrap up by highlighting what makes instantaneous attributes both powerful and practical in seismic interpretation. All right, first, number one, while they may be considered crude, kind of compared to some of the more sophisticated spectral decomp methods um, that we use now, they give us something very invaluable, which is a very rapid way to estimate the envelope, the phase, and the frequency of our seismic reflections. So you can think of them as a great first pass analysis that can quickly reveal features of interest. But you want to keep the limitations in mind. So these attributes become less reliable when there's multiple reflectors interfering with each other. So it's like trying to separate overlapping conversations in a crowded room. And those individual signals will get muddled and that will 
not end up well for your attributes. So next, this is where wavelet and weighted attributes come into play. So by focusing on the most energetic parts of our signal or using the weighted averaging, these attributes provide more stable results even when dealing with those interfering waveforms. So they're kind of like a selective filter that you could use to focus on the strongest, strongest voices in our data. One of the most practical advantages is that complex trace attributes are computationally efficient. So you don't need that supercomputer. Um, you can calculate them directly on your interpretation workstation without needing specialized processing hardware or extensive computing time. And then finally, and this is particularly valuable for 3D interpretation, these attributes serve as excellent constraint volumes for auto-picking reflectors. They provide additional information that helps the automated systems better identify and track those continuous events throughout your seismic volume. So hopefully now you understand how instantaneous attributes can help transform our seismic data into multiple domains of information for us to interpret, each telling its own part of the subsurface story. So by combining these attributes thoughtfully, we can build a more complete picture of the geology that we're trying to understand. As always, you can reach out anytime, and there's even more details and more map available on our website.